Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, we are welcoming everyone in to Dawnblade 3.0. This class is my favorite. It's fun. It's a hard carry. It is, yo team, hop in my backpack and let me clear this entire GM for you. This class is going to be part of the GM meta. Right now, I think it's being overlooked because we're not in any situations yet where the game is really hard. Um, this class is the backpack. This class is like Hunter's Omnioculus. This is the hop in my backpack, let me carry you. This class is nuts. Um, especially with the build I have for you today. I'm sure many people have already seen this build. Um, I'm sure many people have already seen hundreds of takes on this build. Um, but it's a build that I feel like is necessary to share and share my opinions on. Um, I don't think this class is the best class in the game. I don't think this class is necessarily the most insane thing you're ever going to see. But it is the hard carry. It is f also a crap ton of fun. With all that being said... Let's go ahead and hop into the video and welcome everyone in to Dawnblade 3.0. Alright, here on Warlock, I'm going to do the same thing I basically did for Titan. Um, if you are interested in the grenades and fragments for um, all classes, because those are shared between all classes, please look at my Gunslinger 3.0 video. There'll be a card about this point in the top corner. If you wish to go look at all grenades and all fragments, available to you in the game i'm not going to cover all of them since i've already done it once here on my channel and so because of that i'm not going to be covering all of them but if you are interested in all those please go check out my gunslinger 3.0 video which is also a slight introduction into solar 3.0 with that being said what are our melees and aspects for our melees we have two we have a brand new one called incinerator snap this one is freaking cool um i don't think it's the best melee i do think celestial fire is probably a better melee but Incinerator Snap looks cool. It does a decent job. That's why I run it. Um, and then we have Celestial Fire, which is just from Top 3 Dawnblade. It's Celestial Fire. It does everything Celestial Fire has ever done. It's one of the best melees in the game. For our aspects, we have Touch of Flame, which is a new aspect. And it modifies the Warlock-based um, grenades. Very similar to um, Chaos Accelerant on Void. It modified the, modifies the Warlock-based grenades, and here it also modifies the Warlock-based grenades. Um, the one we care about for today's build, and the one most people are caring about, is the Fusion Grenades now explode twice. Also, we have Icarus Dash, and we have Heat Rises. This is split into two different fragments. This is a complaint many Warlock players have, that this was split into two different fragments. Um... But with that being said, yes, this has been split into two different fragments. These are both, um, Heat Rise is about to get a small buff, um, next week. But I run Icarus Dash because I like the movement and being able to zoom around is kind of fun. Alright, that's going to be it for melees and fragments. There's not really much to say about Heat Rises or Icarus Dash. If you've played before, you know what they do. Alright, that'll be it for melees and aspects. Right, um, this is going to be the build portion. There wasn't a lot to cover since I've already covered all my grenades and aspects, um, grain fragments already. So we're going to hop right into a build. Um, so for Solar Warlock, the biggest complaint I've seen is that there's not a lot of build options. And this is really true. Um, this is kind of it. Um, this is going to probably be the way Solar Warlock has played forever. Um, if you like it, and you enjoy it like I do, then this is a real option. Um, otherwise, if you don't enjoy this playstyle, there's not much else here on Solar Warlock for right now. Um, the healing playstyle is kind of gone, if I'm being honest. Um, unless you like really spec into it with like Lumina, running Boots of the Assembler, running a Healing Rift, running Touch of Flame, healing grenades. Like you would really have to spec into it to like really get it going all the way. Um, the way most people would want it to be and so it takes a lot more effort to spec into 
um, that kind of play style now. But this is probably going to be the Warlock class for Solar for a really long time. So what is it? We are on Dawnblade. Um, we are on Empowering Rift. This You'll see why this synergizes really well with our exotic in just a minute. Um, it's basically two of the three parts that can't come off the class, can't be changed. Um, I'm running Burst Glide because it's the best Warlock jump. Um, if you prefer one of the others, you're a weirdo. I'm running Incinerator Snap, but if you prefer Celestial Fire, run Celestial Fire. The melees don't really matter, it's just whatever one you prefer. Um, I think Celestial, I think Incinerator Snap is just cool. It's just cool to do. Um, and then we are on Fusion Grenades. This is the part two of three that can't really be changed about the build, um, because it is core to how we're going to play the class. For our aspects, we're running Touch of Flame and Icarus Dash. This is our three of three here on the subclass for what can't be changed. Um, basically, you need to have Empowering Rift, Fusion Grenades, and Touch of Flame, and you'll be fine. Um, your fragments don't really matter. They're kind of choice. And then whichever one we choose between Icarus Dash and Heat Rises is up to you. If you want to be able to farm melee energy, um, put on Heat Rises. And you can consume your one of your extra grenades to farm melee energy while you're getting kills with your fusions. For our fragments that I'm running, I'm running Ember of Torches. This is going to allow you to become Radiant. Um, and Radiant is a buff that is stacking with basically every other buff in the game. Um, except for Will of Radiance. And I believe this is because Will of Radiance is just making you Radiant. Um, and not actually giving you a different bonus. Um, and so they don't like stack. You can't stack Radiant with Radiant, right? Um, but like an Empowering Rift is just a bonus to weapon damage and therefore it's stacking while being Radiant. Um, which doesn't make sense the fact that Empowering Rift and Well isn't stacking like it should be. Um, which is just interesting things that is happening with the changes to Solar. Um, Ember of Ashes, this is going to allow you to apply more stacks of Scorch causing more ignitions, which means bigger damage. Ember of Searing, um, defeating Scorch targets grants melee energy. Um, this is to help renew melees, um, but not necessary at all. Um, you can run kind of whatever you want to run. If you want to run um, Ember, uh, I'm already running Ember of Singeing. If you prefer something else here, um, maybe Ember of Char. Um, all of those things are really good. Ember of Empyrean, there's no real reason to run here. Other than the fact that you could just remain radiant all the time, which would be kind of nice. Um, but I'm mostly just using it for the plus 10 recovery to help with the build. Um, and to help me get the stat distribution I wish to have. And then uh, lastly, Ember of Singeing. This just helps you get back your um, class ability faster, which directly helps you get back your grenade. Which is just helps the circle keep going. For our armor, I have a solar helmet on. I have a copy of Ashes to Assets, a copy of Harmonic Siphon in case I'm on a solar weapon. This is just a, oh, hey, I'm on a solar, if I'm on a solar weapon, I'll be generating orbs. If I'm not, oh, well. And then Bountiful Wells to generate more solar elemental wells for both me and my teammates. Because I'm not going to really need them. I'm going to Resilience mod because Resilience is king. And then we go over to the gloves. The gloves are on a grenade kickstart. Um, this is to be a just in case I run out of grenade energy. Um, but all honesty, it should actually be a melee kickstart because you're never going to really get to use the grenade kickstart. And so this should be a melee kickstart to give you your melee energy back. Um, and then whichever champion mod you wish to run for whichever activity you're in, um, if you need to take the melee kickstart off to run either Overload, Trace Rifle, or, or Unstoppable Glaive, go ahead. The melee kickstart isn't a deal breaker. And then we're running a Elemental Ordinance. Now when we hop over to Starfire Protocol, which is going to be our exotic. Um, I think most people don't know what Starfire Protocol actually does. And so I'm going to read its exotic perk for everyone. Fusion Grenades have an additional charge. Recharge from and they recharge from empowered weapon damage. What this means is whether you're standing in a um, well or you're standing in a powering rift, 
when you're dealing weapon damage, you are directly getting your grenade back. When you get a kill with your fusion grenade, they grant rift energy. Um, you'd be shocked how often this happens now, now that with Touch of Flame, fusions detonate twice. Um, and they basically give back the entire rift, um, which is great. So you can just place a rift. If you don't have a rift, you throw a grenade, let it kill something, you'll have a rift. Then you start shooting stuff, you get a grenade back, you throw another grenade, and it's this endless loop of just chucking grenades. And then I have Seeking Wells on to help give me, um, my solar elemental wells to me. And then I have armor of, a, one copy of armor of dying to give me solar and void damage resistance, and then a copy of arc resist on top of a resilience mod. On to the boots. The boots have an explosive well maker. This is just to guarantee um, an extra um, elemental well will spawn. Um, this will give us four elemental wells every time our solar our fusion grenade gets a kill, a copy of recuperation, and then a resilience mod. Um, if you wanted to switch explosive well maker and bountiful wells, you could, and then you'd have enough space, as demonstrated here. For most scavs, you wouldn't have enough space for GL, rocket, or machine gun, or sniper. But you're not going to be running a machine gun or a sniper, really, in most content. Most things you're going to be running are a linear, a sword, a regular fusion, um, a trace rifle. All those things are going to have plenty of space to be ran here for scavengers. on to the bond now this is the one piece that is choice um when it comes to which bond you have here i definitely recommend the copy of bomber um, the double copies of bomber this will really help with um how much grenade energy you're going to get back um especially if you're about half grenade energy and you go to pop your rift you're basically guaranteeing yourself your grenade which is really nice um and then I have Will of Ordnance on, though I'm starting to feel as though Will of Life might be better, um, because there's no real way to heal yourself on this class, because you're not on Healing Rift, and I don't think it's worth it to run the six points to run Classy Restoration. Um, as good as Classy Restoration might be, I don't feel as though the six points off the bond here is worth it for running classy restoration where will of life's healing is actually pretty good now um and it would actually be enough to at least heal you some especially if you're running you know eight through ten resilience it's a good amount of healing um for weapons the biggest thing i recommend is either run wither horde or run bugged anarchy other than that your weapons don't matter um the reason for that is damage over time weapons really help this class because you can shoot two weapons which means you're doing twice the damage which means you're going to watch your grenade just be chucked back at you um it's great it comes back so fast when you are built this way for stats you want to play at least eight resilience and then you want to go 100 recov and then decent discipline um the discipline is just to guarantee your grenade has passive cooldown that's really it um if you wanted to just sacrifice your discipline entirely and go resilience, recovery, and strength. That way you have a melee up when you need it, especially incinerator snap or celestial fire being good melees. Um, you could do that. However, I prefer just to have the passive cooldown on my grenade, which guarantees me that I will always have my grenade, which is the biggest part we are building into here. That is really going to be it for today's build. Um, just going to be some closing thoughts and just some housekeeping things as we head into the rest of the season to close out the video thank you everybody all right everyone that's gonna be it for the video today i hope everyone enjoyed um just a couple of things that i want to say about the build um this build is my favorite from this season it's fun and for me that really matters it's really fun to just chuck grenades over and over and over again in a different fashion than we have had before for warlock um however this is not like the most insane thing ever um like i totally think the titan right now is way better 
I totally think Solar Titan and what you can do with it is way better. I don't think it's going to be the GM class for Titans. Uh, I still think that's going to be reserved for Sentinel because of what Sentinel can do for your team. But with that being said, I definitely do think Solar Titan is a better overall class than Solar Warlock. But Solar Warlock is definitely going to be the GM class because you can just carry your team when you need to. It's it's a lot like Omni Aquas Hunter where it, it doesn't it gives you everything and also means your team has to do a lot less effort. And so that's gonna really help with carries and helping clear GMs and farming GMs. This class is definitely gonna be a must want kind of situation. All right, though, but that's going to be it for today's video. I hope everyone has enjoyed. Um, this week is going to be a really interesting week for my channel. I'm going to do something that I've never done, um, and it's going to be a three-part video um, series covering one of the biggest changes we've ever gotten. I'm going to go class through class with one of the most important changes and how it's basically completely changed build crafting in this game. And I hope that everyone likes those videos this season and also liked this video. If you liked this video, please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribing to the channel for more videos just like this one. And I'll see everyone in the next one. Thank you all and goodbye.